So I think my experiences over the past year, I think many health workers across the world will relate to. Um, so I work in the NHS, which is a, you know, a world-class healthcare system, and yet it very quickly became overwhelmed. Um, and many hospitals, including my own, we frequently ran out of beds, ran out of ventilators. And it's a, it's a very, it's a really frightening place to be in when you have three, four, five very sick people um, struggling to breathe and you know you only have one ITU bed free. And as a doctor, you are, you are, you are used to dealing with sickness and you are used to dealing with death, but it is, it is different and it is very difficult when you know that the suffering you're seeing and, and the deaths that you've seen could have been prevented. And as a healthcare worker, I also know that it is irrelevant who someone is or where they come from or what they do. Um, because in healthcare, in healthcare, we treat every person the same. We know that every life is of value and every life deserves to be protected and cared for. Um, and as someone who has also lost a colleague and a family member due to this virus, it makes me so um, upset and angry that we have this incredible, you know, scientific miracle of the knowledge of how to protect lives now with this vaccine. And yet we know that on the current system, 90% to the majority of those in the poorest countries will not be protected, will not be vaccinated this year. Now, people are calling this a vaccine apartheid. Um, I, I don't think I have the words to articulate a system where millions across the world will needlessly die um, simply to maintain a system that ensures a few individuals are able to extract maximum profit from this crisis. And it makes me even more ashamed to know that some of the wealthiest countries in the world, including my own, have undermined global initiatives to improve access to vaccines in poorer countries. So they have knowingly um, and deliberately prolonging the suffering of those in the, the most, those with the least means um, in, in, our, in our world. Um, and I think, you know, I, I guess I'm now speaking directly to people watching in the UK um, and the US and in Europe. Our silence here is complicity because we have a voice and we have the power to put pressure on our governments to support the People's Vaccine Initiative, to waive the intellectual property rights, which will allow this knowledge um, and the technology of how to make these vaccines to be shared openly. And that could allow the massive upscaling of production of vaccines across the world and save millions and billions of lives. Um, and we also need to, you know, quite loudly remind our governments, um, particularly those of us um, in the West, that vaccine nationalism and this you know, economic nationalism, as some may call it, is not only a moral failure, but it is stupidly short-sighted. Because as we know, if you allow the virus to let rip, to let spread in certain countries, then that increases the risk of mutations and that increases the risk of our vaccine then becoming ineffective. So I think, you know, to finish, I feel, you know, sometimes it can feel, it can feel maybe that we've got a bit of an impossible task. Um, we are going against a system which has, you know, massive vested interests in maintaining the status quo. But we also need to remember our very recent history where HIV activists fought against Big Pharma and they won. So we need to not underestimate the power of people organizing. That's our power. And then we also we have to remind ourselves that we will face future pandemics and the multiple crises that we now face in the world of um, climate breakdown, of rising inequality, all of these, the solutions to this is global solidarity and collaboration. We need our governments to have the strength and the integrity to take on these big corporations. And we need to end this rigged system that puts profit before people's lives. And we need to demand a system that's based on fairness, um, and transparency and democratic global governments that prioritizes our health and puts people's lives before profit. So let's support, let's demand a people's vaccine and um, because no one's life is disposable. Thank you for having me.